Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Dr. Sean McAway. You're tuned in to wildpodcast.me. And today we have a special guest, Ado Van Belkom. Sir, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So we're here to talk about your 25th anniversary of your book, Death Drive the Semi. Oh my goodness, man. That has to be extremely exciting. It is very exciting. Uh, the book was originally published in 1998. And uh, over the course of last year, you know, thanks to uh, my young adult novel, Wolfpack, being made into a uh, TV series on Paramount Plus, I did a lot of these podcasts. And one of them was with uh, Mark Leslie, who is an author himself, uh, kind of a guru in uh, social media and electronic publishing and everything like that. And he asked me, um, if I'd be interested in doing a reissue of the book, it happened to be the 25th anniversary that year. And I first I said, no, you know, that's it's in the past. I did that book. You know, it's it's done. But as I thought about it, I thought, you know, that would be really cool to do. So uh, got back to him and said, yeah, let's do that. And it's been a great uh, thing. It's got a fantastic new cover. It's got all story notes by myself, an introduction by myself. We updated the author photo. The first photo was me behind the wheel of a semi truck. So we did that 25 years later of no hair left and a big white beard. And, you know, everything's changed about the author, but nothing about the stories. Added yeah. an additional bonus story and um, got a blurb from Jeff Davis, the creator and showrunner for the Wolfpack series. It's just a great package. And I'm very proud of it. I was proud of the book when it first came out. I'm even more proud of it now. That it's in 25 years, it's in print once again. Right, right. So what was that inspiration when you wrote that that book at that time? Like, what, what made you get into it? Well, the thing I always wanted to be is a writer. And I didn't know uh, in my teenage years what kind of writer I wanted to be. I tried poetry, and it was all terrible. And I tried to write rock songs with a couple of friends. And those were bad too. We we used one word more than any other, and it was baby. You know, the songs would go like baby, 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 and so clearly not uh, rock songs was not going to be it. And uh, tried writing comedy and all these kind of things. Nothing was working out. But I wrote, read a, a book by Ray Bradbury called The October Country, and each story in there it just blew me away. Just fantastic. I'd finish a story and go, wow, that was fantastic. And I finished the book and I said that's the kind of book I'd like to write. I'd like to write a book, those kind of stories. When somebody reads them, they're going to say, wow, that was really terrific. So that was a, a grand thing and it's a grand accomplishment, a, a huge goal. And I set out to do that. And um, at some point I was able to offer a publisher the book and I had about 35 short stories and sent them all to them. And they picked the ones, the 20 ones they liked best, and um, it went from there. And the book uh, was a fair success. It went through two printings. Uh, and it was a Stoker finalist, didn't win, but uh, uh, by all accounts, it did very well. And when you have the opportunity to do uh, the book again 25 years later, you got to take that. You can't just let that pass. Right. So I, I did get a chance to look into the wolf pack and I see behind you, you have a nice little ensemble of books back there. Uh, how did you well, get that series picked up? Which uh, series? You mean uh, the, the wolf pack series? Yes. I had nothing to do with it, except that I wrote a good book. That's it. Um, the book was published in 2004. Um, it won the Aurora Award, which is Canada's uh, top prize for uh, fantasy and science fiction. And it also won the Silver Birch Award, which is a very prestigious award voted on by school aged children. And um, every year, the Ontario Library Association gives the students 10 books to choose from. If they read five of them, then they get to um, vote for their favorite. And uh, Wolfpack was the overwhelming favorite that year. And then uh, no, I should say there was also interest in um, TV movie rights at the time. There's two people interested. One had been an associate producer for the uh, Survivor television series. So, OK, that guy's got some juice. He knows the business. And another one said that they had a development deal with Paramount Pictures. And like, wow, that's terrific. This is a perfect thing. You know, they could get the property and develop it. 
and then nothing happened, which is the, usually the case in uh, this business. People are sniff around for some interest and uh, they'll waste your time and then nothing ever happens. So flash forward uh, 16 years and I'm sitting at the uh, kitchen table. My wife's making dinner and I get an email from my agent saying there's someone interested in the film right or the television rights to Wolfpack. And I'm thinking... These guys are out of their minds. It's been out of print for 10 years and uh, 16 years since it actually was published. So, okay, we'll have to entertain that. In record time, a couple of weeks, uh, there was an offer, which we accepted. And uh, I thought, okay, nothing's going to happen, but we'll take their money for the option. And then um, six months later, they sent me a press release to approve. And I was still thinking, these guys are out of their mind. But, okay, yeah, it sounds really good. And then three days after that, they put out a teaser trailer saying they were going to do a Teen Wolf, the movie, because Jeff Davis uh, did that series for six years. Plus, in 2022, an all new TV series from Jeff Davis, Wolfpack, based on the acclaimed books by Ado Van Belkum. My first thought was, these people are, are nuts. These books are out of print. How acclaimed could they be? You know. And the second was, um, oh, my God, it might really happen. I watched that trailer for about three hours. I just couldn't believe it. Every time my name was there and every time it said it was coming out, and I thought this might actually happen. Fast forward another six months, first day of filming. Oh, my God, this is real. And, you know, and then in uh, November or October, I was at, on the set. People were saying, oh, it's so great to meet you. Like they were impressed with me, the author, the actors and everybody. In, that was surreal. And then a few months after that, we were in Los Angeles for the premiere. And, you know, in terms of a book being made into a film or television property, it took 18 months, which is light speed in this business. Usually these things take years and years and they go through different um, producers and directors and actors get detached and detached and whatever. But what we learned later was that they approached Jeff Davis with the book, gave it to him and said, we have the, we own this property. How would you like to do this? And he said, oh, yeah, okay, I'll do that. But they didn't have the property. So then suddenly there was a, a rush to get the rights from me, which is why everything happened so quickly. Right. My agent at the time thought something was up, but uh, clearly we did it. We had no knowledge of it. And, Perhaps we could have held out for more if we knew, uh, you know, they were under the gun. Like, oh, we'll just squeeze a little tighter and get something more. But that's the way Hollywood works. They knew something we didn't, and they got the rights to it. And uh, I can't complain. Although I had nothing to do with it, it was uh, 18 months of my best, 18 months of my career as a writer. It was fantastic. My name was all over the Internet. The book went in, back into print. Uh, the four books are going to be in print later this year. Uh, audio books of the four books, uh, foreign uh, sales to Chechia, Italy, and uh, Saudi Arabia. So it was just like a jump start. It was like those uh, paddles you put on somebody's heart. The career just went poof. Yeah. And uh, I was back in business. So it was great. But to answer your question, it just happened by dumb luck. I used to say that I was uh, struck by lightning and won the lottery all in the same day. But people have convinced me that, no, you know, you had something to do with it. You wrote a good book. But basically, it was just writing a good book and then letting the chips fall where they may. Right. So in the business aspect of it, have you found that there are any type of shortcuts or it's just, again, dumb luck? Uh, you know, I was on a panel in the thing called book fest and these authors were talking and the subject was how to get your uh, your property made into film or television and all these other authors were saying oh i did up a screenplay and i contacted this producer and i tried to pitch him pitch him on it and everything what you have to realize is the producer's job is to say no i mean he gets inundated with all kinds of projects and his job is to figure out why they won't work that's not going to work because this and that. And, and in the end, if there's something that he can't say no to, it seems like a no-brainer. That's why we have so many uh, Marvel movies and superhero things, because it seems like 
a way to easy way to make money. But anyway, um, he's got he's going to say no. And then I when it came my turn, they said, what, "What are your suggestions?" I said, "Just write the best book you can and see what happens, because you can't convince someone to spend millions of dollars on your product because no one." thinks of it in the same way as you do. You're passionate about it and you're trying to convince someone else's passion the, to be as passionate about it. It's never going to happen. I was lucky that someone already believed in it and that's the biggest hurdle. And they went to somebody who could make it happen and, and that way, instead of someone who believes in it and going to someone who maybe could make it happen, it's just a dynamic that worked in my favor. Um, and I'm just lucky. So any advice is like just with anything you're doing write the best thing you can and be proud of it and put it out into the world and see what happens that's my advice got you so with that being said how does your let's see how how does your legacy look or have you been thinking about your legacy my legacy wow no one's ever asked me about that i know the beard is there and i've lost my hair but it's, so soon to talk about legacy but that's okay because um i don't mind that um i always wanted just to be considered as a good professional writer and i've done many projects that would lend credence to that uh, i wrote three novels for the canadian government uh, with my truck driving detective series and uh, it was to teach uh, truck drivers uh, fuel efficient driving practices. I wrote three novels for the government. It was published by the Canadian government. I mean, who's done that? And the yeah. same character ran for 15 years in Truck News Magazine. Every month there was a chapter of a story. Every four months was a, another story. Ran continuously for 15 years, 55 short stories from start to finish. And the only reason it kind of ended is because the publishing industry changed and they went from being a print magazine to online. And things like that but i've done those things i've i've done novels in the deathland series which is called men's action adventure some call it war porn i don't know which you prefer but i did two of those i've done all kinds of these things always producing a quality product on time that required you know minimal revisions and everything and then as a matter of fact my first novel worm wolf when I got when I got assigned to do that, I was like number five book in a six book series. And then they said, somebody dropped the ball earlier on. And can you do your book quicker? And they gave me five weeks to write it. And I did. And it turned out fine. So if I have a legacy, it's that, uh, you know, Ada was a really good writer, solid professional, produced quality work on time and uh, could always be depended on. So that's so my legacy. Like that's that sounds like a great legacy and definitely we can definitely see it uh, i feel like this interview is a celebration of your life i mean you have phenomenal work man i, I looked you up as, and i was like as judith merrill a science fiction writer i knew early on she, she was being um honored one um, day at a library and she said oh now i can die because you know she had this thing so if i pass away in the next couple of weeks it's your fault because you gave me this tribute and my life is over. I can die now in peace. But um, I appreciate that, uh, you know. And uh, yeah, I just true professional quality work on time, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm happy with that. All right. So in, in closing, um, can you tell everybody like what you're going to be up to lately? Uh, your website, any social media? Okay. Well, you can find me. Uh, first of all, if you find me entertaining check out my YouTube channel. Uh, I used to be a, a television horror movie host on Scream TV up here in Canada. And I did a bunch of uh, movie intros for Post Mortem. That was the midnight showing uh, Monday to Thursday. And I had a lot of fun with that. And there's a bunch of interviews on there. And also I did a thing called Wolfpack Facts, which I talked about the Wolfpack TV series. Uh, so there's YouTube. Uh, Facebook, of course, I'm there. That's your grandfather's uh, social media site, and I finally figured it out. The ones I'm still figuring out are Instagram. I'm on there. TikTok, I haven't got a clue how that works. Yeah. I post things, and uh, you know, it'll get 800 views, and then the other one will get 200, and I don't understand the difference between the two. 
people tell me there's algorithms I have to pay attention to. It's all a little complicated for me, but I'm there. Um, X, I'm also on X, uh, which is rapidly becoming my least favorite social media platform, but I'm still on there and I still post and people are still on there. And uh, what else is left? And uh, I have a website, which isn't much, but uh, you can find it there, vanbalcom.com. So I got it all covered. And I always tell people, if you can't find me, you're just not looking hard enough. Correct. I, absolutely. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking to Ado Van Belcom. He's the author of the series Death Drives a Semi and also the Wolfpack series as well. Sir, it's been an honor and a pleasure speaking with you. A fantastic interview, man. I really appreciate it. It's, it's a pleasure. I had fun too. Uh, you know, if uh, you ever need, I also do uh, spots like this in emergency situations. They seem to be a good fill in. So if you're ever short somebody in a short notice, I can always fill in one or, once or twice. So glad to be here. Glad to uh, yeah, delivered on your expectations. For sure. Thank you so much, sir. It's a pleasure speaking to you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Take right. care.